What's up, everybody? We are so excited to be here for our youth panel. And as you can see, they just turned on their cameras. So we have three members of the HTV Strikers with us. And so the purpose of this panel is to really just recognize how amazing your guys' youth group is. The HTV Strikers were the highest performing Say What group of the year with the most projects, and they were able to reach the most people, so many people. And during this panel, we're going to get to know Matthew, Angelina, and Alessandra and see what their proudest accomplishments were, how they overcame the struggles of the last year and a half, and pretty much things that the whole group is looking forward to this year. So if we want to start out, I wonder if you guys want to introduce yourself real quick. Maybe we can start off with Matthew since you're, you seem excited. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I really am. Uh, hello everyone, my name's Matthew Santos. Um, I'm a part of HTV Strikers. I've been a part of it since freshman year. And I am a senior this year. <laughs> All right, senior year, me too, Matthew. It's like kind of hashtag scary, but we can do it. <laughs> we can do it. Angelina, what about you? I see a familiar last name there. Hello, my name is Angelina. And yes, uh, I'm Alex's sister, the TA. And I'm also a senior in high school. I've been in the HGB Strikers and say what for the last four years. And I love it. All right. Thank you so much, Angelina and Alessandra. I also see a familiar last name there. So if you want to go ahead and introduce yourself. Hey, guys, I'm Alessandra. Ruben is my brother. I mean, but it's a good thing. I guess. Um, I am a sophomore in high school and I've been a part of Say What since the summer before my freshman year. All right. That's that's fantastic that you all have been involved with Say What and your youth group for so long. And so if you guys are ready, you want to give me a thumbs up if we're ready to get into those questions. Woo! All right. So Matthew and Angelina, this question is going to go to you guys. So I want to know what your group is about and how you've been able to see your youth group grow over the past few years that you've been here. And while you're answering that question, maybe you can throw in what your favorite project was. So if either of you want to go ahead and answer that question. Um, the HEB Strikers, we have been uh, a group since 2014 and we're established here in Corpus Christi, Texas. And we're mainly, we mainly work with uh, Say What and we do little projects with our school and community as much as we can, especially under the circumstances that we are in. And uh, over the last few years, we've grown a lot. We've came from like being such a little group to being somewhat bigger now, which is really great to see in a group that I've been in for quite a while now. Yeah, I agree with uh, what Angelina said. The say like our HTV strikers group when I started freshman year it was really tiny we only have maybe like 10 or 20 like people like participants and then now going into like our our senior year we it's grown so much like our we were a lot more uh like our group has grown like and I could you could see it like you could tell just from freshman year like if you got pictures from freshman year to now it's so big and I love it um yeah. <laughs> you know what we're going to have to do? We're going to have to get a picture of your freshman year HTV Strikers group versus your senior year so that we can put them oh, together no. so that we can put them together and show all of our participants how you can grow your youth group. I myself, I look up to you guys, your HTV Strikers. Uh, in my TA presentation, I mentioned my group and we really look up to you guys. And it's honestly been kind of a hard year, like you said, Angelina. So Alessandra, I want to know what helped motivate you and your group to work hard during this pandemic year. I would say that a big um, motivation was kind of the fact that everybody was stuck at home. We had nothing to do. We were just sitting around and it was kind of like, like, <laughs> the world was in a bad place so it was a good time to do a good thing that's really inspiring a good time to go do a good thing we're gonna have to quote you on that one there you go new quote new say what quote from Alessandra Garza 
good time to do a good thing. Um, and since you're doing good things, this question is open to anybody. What accomplishment is your group the most proud of? It could be over the four years, over two years, over the pandemic. Matthew? Uh, okay, so I I've been waiting for this question. This is probably one of the most things I'm proud of personally in the group. Uh, last, uh, my sophomore year, we presented in front of our college, our, our community college deans, like to talk about like tobacco and to like, hopefully get them like more, like make the rules more strict about tobacco at our college, because we know that, you know, they're kind of a little lenient when it comes to like certain things. And so we, we met up with the deans of our college and we talked to them. And I feel like that is amazing. <laughs> and yeah. I think that would be one of my favorite accomplishments that us HDB strikers have also like done because it really showed how much our work has paid off as a group uh, to go to that level of talking to the deans of a college. And yeah, it makes me really proud of our group and how much have we have grown. That is a big deal. Like I talking to the dean of a college, like you guys just gave such great answers that I want to hear Alessandra's answer. What is your, <laughs> what is your favorite accomplishment, Alessandra? It's okay if it's the same one, but I just want to hear your take on it. Um, accomplishment for our group. Let me think about that. I kind of, um, I don't really have an answer. I mean, like everything that they've done has just been so great and I'm so proud of them. But me personally, I have not been really involved with any of their huge accomplishments. Oh, well, you know what, Alessandra? It's okay because I know that you have two more years of high school and the HTV strikers are just gonna continue to grow like they like they blew up the last four years, right? They're just gonna continue to grow and you're gonna have a big accomplishment to talk about next year or the year after. So I'll be looking forward to hearing that answer, Alessandra. And now for the next question, we're gonna go ahead and go around again. We can start off with Matthew, Angelina, Alessandra. I wanna know why you guys like being involved in say what or tobacco prevention in general. Like what, what makes it speak to you? Uh, for me, like the reason why I like being involved with uh, say what in general is because like it informs me and it also informs my family because like when I leave from like the summits and the conferences, I go home and I tell my family all about it. Like they, I'm pretty sure if I, you can ask any of my family, they'd be like, oh yeah, I know this, 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 because they know just about everything. And I think what the main reason I like to be a part of say what is because it, the information that you guys give is so amazing but yet you guys don't tell it so where like it becomes boring and it's like you know you lose interest like you tell it so it keeps on being interesting and I think for me like that's probably the main reason just the amount of information that we get from just being a part of stuff like this yeah and then the information that we provide to you guys you guys take it and you spread it out through your community so that you are a part of that wonderful part of say what that is that is on you guys the members the TAs the information that's that's a good answer Matthew thank you so much Angelina what about you I think I love working with say what and like being a part of tobacco prevention mostly because it's helped not probably not just me but other people as well learn how to use their voice and advocate for something that they're really passionate about I remember when I first joined high school or before I joined HDB Strikers and Say What, I had no idea that Say What was a thing or even how to be an advocate. And then when I did join, I went to the conference and I learned so much useful information about tobacco prevention. And I went home and spread it throughout my family because I do have a lot of family members who unfortunately use tobacco products. But I think with the information that I've given them, uh, it has helped them realize and try to cut back on their usage. But I think use, being able to learn how to use your voice and stand for something that you're very passionate about is what makes me happy to be a part of tobacco prevention and see what. Totally. It's super important to be passionate about what you're doing. And you guys can tell because the HTB strikers are the top performing youth group of the year. They are the most passionate youth group so far. Alessandra, what about you? Why, why is tobacco prevention one of your passions? Um, I think a big part of it is where I grew up and uh, you get to really 
see the effects on the people and the um I guess where you live like your environment that tobacco and other kinds of drugs have on a person mentally and physically so um I think that really just encouraged me to be involved to help people acknowledge and learn about this kind of stuff. Alessandra, you are so right. It's it's a community-based effort. And sometimes it's really, really hard to do all of this advocacy work by yourself. So now I want to ask you all, anybody can answer this question, how your sponsor of the HTB Strikers has been supportive of you all in the last few years and this year doing projects within your school and community. So anybody's free to answer this question. Uh, okay, so Miss Burnside, I know she's watching in the room right next to us. Uh, and <laughs> she has been probably one of the best like supporters out there for HTB Strikers. Like she's, when it comes to events, she always reminds us on everything. Hey, there's, there's something going on, you know, go to this, go to this. And she's really like, I don't, I don't know how to explain it like she's just really supportive and she like you could tell like she loves being a part of say what and we all just like we all just kind of bounce off each other's energy and it's it's so much fun I couldn't imagine a better sponsor no offense <laughs> Matthew about to throw shade at all our other sponsors on here <laughs> <sorry>. <laughs> I'm just kidding, Matthew. I'm just kidding. What about you two girls? Do you have anything to say to Miss Burnside, who is watching us right now? Miss <laughs> Burnside truly is the best sponsor ever. Because every time we have like a project, especially during uh, the pandemic, uh, we've done a lot of cigarette butt cleanups. And she's always reminding us on Canvas through text message and as much as she can to make sure that we're staying active during this time because it is hard. But yeah, she's the best. And I think because of how passionate she is, she's spread it amongst all of us in the HGB Strikers, which is what's keeping us going for sure. Yeah. I know um, I've known her through Ruben since he was a freshman in high school. So I've known her for quite a while, even though it's through my brothers because they've um, been taught by her, but it's just amazing. She's really passionate about this kind of stuff. Like I remember one time I walked into her room and say it was like Valentine's Day or Christmas or something. And she has these huge bags of candy. And I'm like, what are you doing? And she's all sitting there bagging the candy in her spare time, just putting the bags together. And I'm like, that's a lot of stuff to do. So she is just amazing. And she gets really involved. And I love that about her. Miss Burnside, you are a very dedicated sponsor. So quick shout out to Miss Burnside. If you all could just put in the chat like a virtual round of applause to Miss Burnside for being a fantastic sponsor to the HTV Strikers. So shout out Miss Burnside. Thank you so much. And you all are fantastic advocates, Matthew, Angelina, Alessandra. And that is why you are here today. You guys are natural leaders. So I want you all to give some tips to our participants watching at home on how they can strengthen their leadership and advocacy efforts and take it to the next level. So if anybody wants to go ahead and answer that question. I think to like some advice would just to be or stay connected with everyone in your group. I think communication is extremely important during this time especially since it's hard to get out and do stuff. But I think staying connected with your group and being able to contact each other to do even just the smallest projects is something really important as a group. I would say uh, I completely agree with, I'm so sorry, did I cut you off? <laughs> it's okay, don't worry about it, you go first. <laughs> okay, thank you. Teamwork um, right there, teamwork. <laughs> I would say, like, I would, com I completely agree with Angelina. It's just like staying connected. I also think is to don't be afraid to share your opinion on the subject. Like, if you're see, if you're sitting like in a meeting, with a like, a, like a group meeting, I would say to share your opinion about anything. Like, if you think that you should go to this place to do a butt hunt, then you say it. Don't be afraid to like s speak your opinion because that's the you know that's kind of like the whole point. Because like freshman year, I was super shy. I did. I would have. I could not imagine right now doing something like this when freshman year, but now, you know, I've, I've voiced my opinion a lot. And I think I would say the main advice just to speak out about what you like, what you want to do. 
Yeah, super important to just grow out of your shell and become a better advocate. I was also super shy as a freshman, Matthew, and now senior gang right here. We're all we're all out here with our energy. <laughs> Alessandra, I know you wanted to answer that question too, so I'm gonna throw it back to you. Yes, I totally agree with both of them. It is great to just voice your opinion and definitely communicate, even if um, taking that step forward is reaching out to your friends, reaching out to your teacher, your principal, people in the, communi in the community. It's just that next step to get forward. Communicate, make your voice be heard. Yeah, totally. You got to you got to put yourself out there everybody. If you are very passionate about something, you don't need to stay quiet. You just got to put yourself out there and make sure that you you get what you want to get done accomplished. And that's what we're looking forward to this next school year. So, Alessandra, I'm going to throw it back to you again since you don't have a favorite accomplishment yet. I want to know what you are looking forward to accomplishing either this next school year or your senior year. Um, I'm definitely looking forward to the amount of community activities that we can do, including butt huts, because they're honestly so fun and I enjoy it. Um, something bigger, maybe, uh, I would say probably going out and talking to probably kids in middle school, because they're probably the ones that mostly need to know and learn this stuff, because in middle school, it's kind of your time to be like rebellious and um, try new things and do whatever you want kind of stage. So I'd say probably going out to the community and speaking with them. That's really honorable. I, I, I love that you you are so passionate about making sure that middle schoolers and younger teens and adolescents understand the dangers of tobacco and nicotine. That that's a great place. To, that's a really great goal, Alessandra. So I want to hear the same from Angelina or Matthew. What are you all looking forward to? Your biggest senior year accomplishment? What's on your agenda? For me, I would say one of my biggest accomplishments is to get the fr our, our upcoming like freshmen and our sophomores to be more active and to know, like to be aware about the tobacco and like how harmful it is and I would also say it's just to overall just have fun because it's my last year I want to I want to have like fun events like I want to have like I I want to hopefully have a whole bunch of like butt hunts and make it as like the best year as possible because it's our last year so I might as well yeah it's like almost time to pass the torch huh that's a little heartbreaking but it, it, it has to happen eventually Miss Burnside will be there to make sure the torch goes smoothly. <laughs> what about you, Angelina? What you looking forward to? Um, it's kind of like what Matthew said, being able to get our freshmen, our upcoming freshmen and sophomores more involved, just because we want to have as many members as we can before we do leave. But I think what I'm most excited for is really just to get back into doing projects. It was really sad not being able to do that much and attending like all the say what events due to the pandemic. So I think just getting back into our groove and doing projects and having our uh, weekly meetings is what I'm just mainly excited for. And you never know what's gonna happen or what kind of events we'll get to do in the future, like presenting more or just even other projects as well. For sure, building up that project list. Uh, you guys, are you guys aiming to be the top performing youth group next year too for your last year? I don't know. I see you guys. Alessandra's like, ah. yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm, or Always we're ready. hoping. <laughs> Always <Yeah>. ready. <laughs> Yeah. We're gonna keep uh, it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna tell my youth group we have to we have to get on their level. We have to get on the HTV Strikers level. <laughs> Yeah. Oh my gosh. You guys are just so great. And that was the last question that I had for you all. So now I'm going to open it up to you guys in the audience. You can go ahead and use the Q&A feature to ask Angelina, Matthew, and Alessandra some questions. And I see that there are already some in there. So I'm going to go ahead and ask you guys those. But if you in the audience have any questions, feel free to put them into the uh Q and A box. So this one says, what advice do you all have if, if the participant wanted to start their own youth group? Ooh, that one's kind of a hard <laughs> one. <laughs> I had to, oh, okay. So what advice would I have if 
you want to I would say to try and get as many people as possible like whether that be like going to like like a park or something like if it's at a school it'd be easier because you know you could set up a little booth in the hallway because I know we did that multiple times set up a booth in the hallway and pass out flyers and tell them hey you want to join our group but uh, if not then I would say go to like somewhere probably like a park and just say hey do you know about the dangers of tobacco and you know try and get as uh trying to go to most prop the most popular places and do it over there so yeah yeah it, it is a little bit difficult to start a youth group but it's nothing that you guys cannot accomplish it it's just you have the dedication you have the drive and you will get to where you want to be with your youth group like the HTV strikers have with their with their huge youth group and all of their projects and speaking of projects, I want to know what type of events that you guys like to hold. This question is from Kevin. So what events do you all do as HTV Strikers? I feel like the HTV Strikers, we're, we hold a lot of cigarette butt cleanups. I feel like that's what we're mainly known for in our projects, besides going to, like, say, what events. But, yeah, we're very active with cigarette butt cleanups. We usually have the, a really good turnout every time we do hold them. And they're always so fun because sometimes we have little challenges while we do them. Like we split up into groups and see who can pick up the most. And we get to go to fun places like the beach or uh, fun little parks. And yeah, but I think those are very fun events to hold for the HGB Strikers. This isn't an audience question, but I am just curious, how many cigarette buds do you guys get in one cleanup? How many are there? Alessandra, I see you going like a little shock there. <laughs> so I, ju I just want to know because Kevin and I were talking about that in our presentation that he found almost a thousand in his cleanup. So I, I want to know how many you guys average. Let's see. Is it around the same range or? <laughs> It, I think it kind of depends on the the place as well because I know when uh -huh. we go to the we've gone to the beach a few times and we pick up a lot mostly because people are always there because there's like parks a skating park a basketball course so everyone is usually there and I know when we went there the last time it we yeah it was so much like a thousand like Miss Burnside said a thousand to three thousand it's wow. it, it's really insane to see how much there is that is a lot. And then you just think of all of the people that have smoked those and just threw them out. And how many lungs are being damaged on a daily basis because of those cigarettes? Um, and I, there's another question from Alex. Can you all share more about, oh, Alessandra, I'm so sorry. Would you like to jump in there? Um, yeah, I just wanted, I wanted to ask everybody else um, if they've ever done a bunt hunt where was the place where you found the most butts? That's a great question. I wanted to know other people's uh, places. <laughs> yeah. That's a great, we're like flipping the panel on the audience here. I'm just kidding. Uh, so if you all in the audience want to answer where the place you found the most cigarette butts is, you can go ahead and type that in the chat where your, where your location was. And then while we're waiting for those to come in, we do have another question from Alex. So um, I think this would be more towards you, Angelina, because you gave the presentation to the Dean. He was wondering, can you share more about what it was like to give that presentation and how you prepared for that presentation? This presentation was, I think honestly our biggest project we had because we were presenting in front of such important people but it was really scary. I remember like preparing for it. We would sit all together working on the PowerPoint and we would just practice over and over. And we were so nervous. And I remember walking to the room where we were having it and we were all shaking and like, we were just all so nervous. But when we got there, the people that we were presenting to the deans, they were really, really nice about it and they're very open-minded about the information that we shared with them and if I remember correctly the reason why we were able to have this presentation is because me and Alex were on our way to our class and we saw someone on campus of the college they were using a, a vape and we were like whoa like because we've never really seen someone on a college campus use them and we realized that they don't really have strict uh, rules on 
smoking and using all those types of products. So we emailed their deans to see if we were able to present to them about it. And surprisingly, we were able to, and we got to talk to them, share them, or share with information to them about tobacco prevention and why they should have more strict rules on it. And it was really awesome. One of our best accomplishments for sure. That is a big accomplishment. Like like we said earlier, that that's just such a big deal to be able to go to the dean of a college that oh, I can't even imagine. <laughs> and so while you're answering that question, we got answers to Alessandra's uh, question in the chat. So let's read a few of those. Kevin said downtown, the city park, the beach, parks, parking lots, um, store parking lots, hospitals. That one is one that I wouldn't expect, but it happens more than you'd think. City parks and college campuses and backyards. Um, I don't know if we want to go jumping into people's backyards to clean cigarette butts, but uh, let's, let's stay away from that one. To ask, whose backyard did y'all go into? <laughs> Yeah, Zane, if you want to go ahead and answer whose backyard you went into, but we recommend not holding public cigarette butt cleanups in people's backyards. Someone mentioned uh, cigarette butts at a hospital. I remember, I think it was our freshman year, and we went and had a cigarette butt cleanup at a hospital, and surprisingly, we found a lot of cigarette butts, and there was even a bench that had a sign that said no smoking, yet there was still some there. It was very shocking you think hospitals where you're leaving healthy and coming in sick that people would be a little bit more conscious of what they're doing near hospitals but um some people just are too addicted to these products and that's why we try our best to educate about the dangers of these tobacco before somebody is hooked and that's why people want to get into tobacco prevention so we have a question from alicia uh, Alicia Barton asked, what advice do you have to get in a youth group like this, especially as an adult? How, how would somebody get involved in tobacco prevention? That one, it's kind of hard to like answer. Uh, I would say just keep on attending like to like to say what conference and the summits, because you'll find people from your area, like, like whether like in your city and like from there you could try and you can try and message them try to get in touch with them so you can join their group uh like that's kind of hard I, I really don't know how to answer that Angelina do you know how I think as an adult it is a little harder because you don't know really know where to start but I think as an adult just like what Matthew said sticking with say what doing as much as you can and if you can like do a little research and see if there's any groups in your city or town that does tobacco prevention projects. Uh, with schools, it's a lot easier because you're able to go talk to your administrators and see what you can do to start a group. But as an adult, I think just making sure uh, or just staying with say what and even doing your own research on your own time would be something that can help benefit you. Totally. You guys just gave fantastic answers as youth to uh, a, a topic you can't necessarily relate on too much, but we do have an answer from Miss Burnside uh, to Alicia's question. Miss Burnside says that she always tries to make it fun, offering snacks and drinks and making it about them and things that interest them. Use the tools and videos that Say What offers to show your kids. So Alicia, if you want to get more involved, you can take Mrs. Burnside's advice as well as our adult session that we are going to be hosting tomorrow. So if you want to join in for that one, you will get a lot of good information on how to be an adult advocate and an adult sponsor within Say What. And oh my goodness, you all have so many good questions. Um, there are a few in the chat. I got one from, I believe it's Jennifer. Her name is cut off. Do you all post your findings on social media, how you share these results where your community and also where can we keep up with what you are doing? Uh, for us, we we have our own Instagram. And so we post like how many cigarettes we got a certain, but like a certain, but uh, cigarette, but clean up, like we, we post them and we post like where, like if we're going to have a, uh, Another secret about cleanup, like the event, we post it on the our Instagram. For the most part, uh, the Instagram's really, really like we we try to be as active as possible on there, and 
Yeah. That's that's good. Okay, so I saw that Miss Burnside said that uh, that you guys have a social media. So what is your as a social media handle? So I can type it in the chat. Give it to give it to everybody that's here. So I believe we the Instagram that. for HTB Strikers is HTB Strikers. Oh, just keeping it simple, right? <laughs> Let's see. Yes. Did I type it in right in the chat? Yes. All right. So everybody who's listening, if you want to keep up with the HTB Strikers, I just chatted their at on Instagram. So you can go ahead and head over there and see all the great projects that they are doing. Um, there is another question in here from Kevin. So Kevin is asking any advice on how to recruit new youth members. And I want to hear the answer from Alessandra on this one, since they are going to be passing the torch to you after their senior year. I want to know what your tips are on how to recruit new youth members. Um, so honestly, I would just try it first, you know, telling them about the good and the bad, and then if that doesn't work, you know, everybody loves food. So a pizza party, maybe, <laughs> or, you know, you advertise it like, um, let me think of something, you know, how they're like new style for like certain candies and stuff. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> advertise and talk to them. Um, try to involve some of their interest in it. If somebody likes sports, talk to them about the effects that it could have on them if they play sports, stuff like that. that. So it's more like relating to the youth. You have to you have to communicate that our story matches with a potential member's story and that we can relate and be on the same level on advocacy work like this. So I have another question from Alicia. What kind of safety measures do you all take for the cleanup events like your cigarette butt litter cleanups? that that's a really good question we wear gloves i believe the say what provides them we we get like uh bags and we also wear gloves uh, so that we don't touch the cigarettes themselves because i that's no <laughs> so yeah we wear gloves and we pick them up and we put them to bags and after that we take a picture of them post them on our instagram and then we throw them away and that's about it that's so important because there's just so many toxic chemicals. I believe over 4,000 chemicals in cigarette and e-cigarette litter. And we don't want to unnecessarily expose ourselves to those chemicals. Um, it's just, it's, uh, I see Ms. Burnside said that during COVID, you all also did social distancing and masks. So good job for you guys for keeping up with the guidelines and still protecting your community from pollution and keeping our environment as clean as possible. And I have another question in here. Um, how are you all going to continue your, your efforts in tobacco prevention when you leave high school and go off to college? Angelina, if you wanna go ahead and answer that one. Um, I'm hoping to stay with the HCB strikers or not stay with them, but stay connected with them. Like I'll, I will for sure be staying connected on like our social medias. And with Say What, I'll for sure stay with them and uh, keep in contact and make sure or keep updated with everything that they're doing. And especially since like I have my brother who's very involved as well, I have him to rely on and to keep me updated with great information. So it's, it's really important to just continue to stay involved if you're passionate because there's no age limit on advocacy. You can be an advocate at 10, or you can be an advocate at 100 if that's <laughs> physically able, possible for you. Uh, there's no age limit on being an advocate. And hopefully you all can continue to grow your efforts at college. I want to hear this, this answer from Matthew too. What about you? How are you planning to stay involved? I think I, I'll, I'll probably uh, do Peers Against Tobacco, like Ms. Burns had said in the chat. And then I would also, because I have a dream college I want to apply for. And if I, I'm not sure if they don't if they do or not, but if they don't have a tobacco prevention group, I wanna create one over there. And if they do, then obviously I'm gonna join it and I wanna be super active, just how I am in this one, because I, I really do love uh, like I, being an advocate for tobacco prevention. I, I it's, it's so much fun. I couldn't imagine doing anything better. That's, that's a really good 
way to continue to stay involved, Matthew. I love that you have the drive and you're already planning on how you're going to start your own youth group at your dream college. Like you are just so dedicated and we are so happy to have you a part of the HTV Strikers and say what, and cause it's senior year, we're, we're going to college. <laughs> Scary. I'm just kidding. Uh, so Angelina, I have a question from you from Alex. What is a mini grant kit and how do they help you within your projects at school? A mini grant kit are these kits that we receive from Say What. They come with all the, the things that we need for like cigarette butt cleanups and they provide us with information about e-cigarettes and tobacco prevention. And they're really very helpful. And we use them every time we have a butt cleanup. Uh, we, they come with like red flags to put down every time we find a cigarette butt. They come with the bags that we put the cigarette butts in. They come with like little bracelets frisbees uh just lots of cool stuff that makes people want to get more involved and be able to share with others as well totally those uh mini grant kits are super helpful and if you all want a mini grant kit i believe they become available on the say what website in september so y'all better go hit up the website when they become available because they will go fast you will go on the website in the morning and you say hey i'll just or i'll order it when i get home from school like no they'll be gone you gotta get uh you gotta get those mini grant kits when they come out they are super in in demand so um th go ahead and get those when they come out in september and now we have about five ish minutes left so i just want to hear what you all are thinking about conference so far like alessandra what are you thinking how's conference being how's how's it been going i've had a lot of fun this is my second time and unfortunately they have both been virtual but they've still been really fun and i honestly love like almost my favorite part i don't i don't want to compare anything to it but dr denoble's stories are the best i absolutely love him so yeah 100 percent agreed dr denoble is my favorite part of conference i just love how he gets a phone call from the president and he's like how are you like <laughs> <laughs> like it's casual everyday talk yeah every day i talk to mr bill clinton like <laughs> to President Clinton. <laughs> it's just, wow. <laughs> what about you too, Angelina? Matthew, what's your house conference been going for y'all? Conference for me has been really fun, uh, especially uh, where this year has been really, really, really fun. I really loved like the lunch thing with Alex and Ruben. That was funny. I We were sitting there just laughing so hard, <laughs> like what they were saying. And um, but over the years, conference has just been such a blast, especially whenever I did it, which was freshman going to sophomore year in person. That was so much fun. I, once once I went to that, I instantly knew that's it. I'm hooked. I need to be a part of this. I do, And I, I made it like my goal to just be a part of it as much as possible. <laughs> so I love it so much. Hey, it, it just it gives you something to do. It makes you feel good to be involved and know that you're just doing good within your community and your school. Uh, what about you, Angelina? This could be our final answer of the day. Sad. I'm enjoying, yeah, I'm enjoying conference a lot. It, do, uh, being virtual is very different from the last few years of being in person. It's obviously different, but it still has the same energy, I feel like. And you guys have been, uh, become so creative with your, like, projects on here, like the the Say What Reacts. That was so creative, and I loved it, and I'm sure everyone was laughing their butts off. But I do miss being or having in person conference. I think it's easier to be or it's fun to be around everyone in person, but due to the conditions we're in, uh, it makes sense. But I'm enjoying conference and I'm glad to see everyone and interact as much as we can due to not being able to be in person. But yes, I'm enjoying it a lot and I love Say What. I'm so glad you all have been enjoying this conference, even though it is a virtual conference. We are all so glad to have you here, the members of the HCB Strikers and you participants. Uh, we don't know what we would do without you all. And we hope that we will be able to see you in person, in the flesh, in an in-person conference next year. So we do have that to look forward to. And with that, I just want to give a big thank you to Angelina, Alessandra, and Matthew for coming on 
on to our youth panel and discussing their group, the HTB Strikers. So if you can all give a round of applause in the chat for these wonderful youth members before we say goodbye to them for the day. So go ahead and give them a round of applause in the chat for Angelina, Alessandra, and Matthew. Thank you all so much for being on. And if we all just want to say bye before we hand it off to the MCs, everybody wave. Bye. Goodbye. Thank you for having us. Bye. Thank bye, you. Everybody. Bye.